More recently, when I've been programming, if I find multiple ways to do something very similar, I've been getting very curious about the performance characteristics of either way to do it. When it comes to regular expressions in C-sharp, I know that regex can be pretty darn slow, and I wanted to make sure that if I was trying to work with regex, I could work with the most optimal way of doing it if I really needed to use it. Hi, my name's Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. I spent a lot of time before Microsoft working in digital forensics, and a big part of that was making sure that we could match on particular sequences of characters or bytes. That meant that every time we had to go touch a regex because that was the best way to go match a pattern, my heart sank a little bit because I knew it was going to be a performance hit. Now, we've had some awesome improvements to .NET over the years, and I haven't been in digital forensics for a bit, but I still find myself using regex. So in this video, I wanted to walk through some benchmarks using benchmark.net so we can check them out. A quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my free weekly newsletter and my courses on Dome Train. Let's go check out the benchmark code. As I mentioned, I am using benchmark.net. You can see right at the top here, I am going to be using the benchmark runner to go run all of the benchmarks in this assembly. And we really only have this one benchmarks class here. So there's a whole bunch going on and I'm going to kind of walk through it bit by bit, but we're going to look at a handful of different ways that we can go create and run regular expressions. Before I go into the details of this, I just wanted to mention that the text that we're going to be matching against is from the Project Gutenberg ebook of The Adventure of a Black Coat. I just downloaded this from the internet. You can see if I scroll through this pretty quick, right, there's a whole lot of text here. There's over 2,000 lines, 2266 lines here of text that we can go match against. So I wanted to have something that was pretty substantial. And just to kind of illustrate it to you in the setup, I'm going to load it all at once. So it's not like per benchmark I'm reading in this file. That time is going to be omitted from the benchmarks. But there's a handful of different benchmarks that I want to go run when using a regex. So I'm going to go collapse these and then we're going to step through them one by one. The first one that we're going to look at is going to be the baseline that we're using as well for all of these. And it's going to be using the static class with the static method for matches. And we're going to compare the source text and look for the pattern. And I should have mentioned that the pattern that we're going to be using is words that end in ing or end in ed. No real specific reason, I just wanted to see these are kind of natural endings that show up periodically in words, and that way I wanted to see that we're not going to try to match something that doesn't exist at all, or matching something like the letter A and having a ton of matches come up. So I wanted to have something that could be representative across that body of text. So we're going to use the static class and static method as the baseline. And then the next most common way that I see regexes get used is creating a new regex every time you want to go run it and then use matches on that as well. So you can see that we also still have the regex pattern and the source text passed in here. And another variation of this, this comes up a lot because if you're kind of reading into regex, you'll have heard that using the compiled flag can really speed up the performance of your regular expression. But one of the traps here is that if you're creating a new one and putting in the compiled flag every time, you're technically paying the performance penalty of compiling it each time you go to use it. So if you're using it once, it's maybe not so bad. But if that's the case, do you need to compile it? I don't know. You probably want to go benchmark that and find out. But we're going to compare and see the overhead of doing that compared to just newing it up compared to the static method and static class. Now, similarly to what we've seen already, I'm going to cache the regex that we're creating. So if you want to see this get used, and I'll show you this with a compiled one as well, we'll check these both at the same time. But in the setup code that I have at the very top here, all that I'm doing is creating those regular expression objects once in the setup and then we can reuse them for each run so this way if there is any performance overhead for creating those regex objects we're not going to pay it each time we're just going to cache it and do it once and finally at the bottom here you'll see that i have these generated variations and they're going to be very similar in terms of doing a cached variation using the compiled flag and this is sort of the matrix of all of them but what is this generated regex like What's the difference here? Let me scroll back up to the top and we can see where these are created and I'll explain in a little bit of detail what's going on here. So on line 24, you can see where I am creating this get generated regex method. And you'll notice that it's marked as partial and static. And that means that the class itself also has to be marked as partial. 
Now, these are going to be source generated regular expressions, and I believe it was introduced in .NET 7. I might have the version wrong, but it's relatively recently where we were getting these attributes that you could put onto these. And in fact, Visual Studio will often give you an option over these. So if I hover over, you can see convert to generated regex attribute. So this is a feature in Visual Studio that suggests you might want to switch over to this pattern. Now they have really good documentation online and MSDN that explain this. And I'm not gonna go into the details of this. I just wanted to show you very briefly that if I go into this, if I press F12, you can see the generated code for this. And they did this on purpose because they want you to be able to debug your regular expressions if you need to. So they include things like comments and stuff, like that's a really important part they said, but there's a lot of super cool stuff that can happen when they go to do these and have the source generation go alongside it. So I do recommend that if you're using regular expressions extremely heavily, check out the MSDN information for the uh, these generated regex with the source generators. Super cool. It's totally above my head because I use regex a lot, but not this level of detail. However, I thought that this was important because if this is the direction that they're pushing us in, why, right? There's got to be some type of performance impact here. So I wanted to check that out. I don't know if I have enough representation in the pattern. I'm trying to be transparent about this. The pattern that I'm using here, I don't know if that's going to be able to show us enough variation across these, but this is something that I think you want to explore if you're trying to optimize and work with different regular expressions. So the thing that I do know is that when you're using these uh, generated regex attributes, it should by default give you compiled as a flag. So you'll see I've actually created one that includes it specifically. The documentation does say that this does get ignored. I did this on purpose to prove it to us, right? These two should functionally be identical if the compiled flag is ignored. And that's because the regex itself, like I said, when it's doing this source generator is going to basically use the same concept of compiled automatically for us. So you should not have to include it but certainly more optimizations to be had when doing this. So again, I'll say it one more time, check out the MSDN documentation for all of the details because there's a ton of work put into this for you to be able to go investigate them. One more point that I'll mention is you'll notice when I hover over this, the tooltip text that pops up, right? It actually explains to you, this is so awesome. It explains to you what your regular expression is supposed to be doing. So if you typed up a regex, and you want to make sure that it's doing what you expect, having this explanation written out in English is so powerful because if you work with regex, you know that they can get complicated super fast. Okay, so the benchmarks that I have, I just wanted to illustrate here. Let's go down a little bit lower. I'll expand all of these. I mentioned that there should be no difference between the compiled variations and not, right? So these two should be equivalent to these two because the documentation does say that that compiled flag does get ignored because it's basically done for us. But the thing that I wanted to call out as well, you'll notice that these are method calls, right? So I have to call get generated regex to be able to access that source generated code. The documentation does also say that it caches that for us. So once you do this, you still get access to that code. It doesn't have to go recreate anything, which is awesome. So in theory, right, in theory, this should be identical to this in terms of performance, because if behind the scenes, this is doing caching for us, it should be identical to this. However, I just wanted to see for myself by running this, if there was overhead to doing this method call. So with all of that said, I do expect all of these to be very much the same set of results when it comes to performance. Like with all of my benchmarking videos, I'm not going to sit here and make you wait for them to all finish. I've done that ahead of time. So let's check out the results. Okay. There's a lot of variability and a lot of similarity when we start scanning this, right? So the columns, if you're not used to the benchmark.net output columns that we're interested in are going to be this mean column, which is going to be the average runtime that it took. We're interested in the ratio because this is going to give us a comparison against the baseline which was the static class with the static method. And then there's also memory allocation as well. So we have this allocated column right here, the second last, and also a ratio to compare against the baseline. 
With that said, starting with our baseline, the static glass and static method right at the top, that's just over 12 nanoseconds. In my opinion, that's actually way faster than I ever thought that these regexes would have run against that text. I don't know why, I just assumed it was going to take significantly longer. This was doing matches, plural, so it did go look for all of the matches with ing and ed for the words, and there should be a whole bunch. 12 nanoseconds is our baseline, but it's going to get more interesting as we start comparing the other results. So if you were to new up a regex object every time you wanted to go use it, it is 100 times, 100 times slower, right? <laughs> if you look at the ratio column, it says 101.72. So literally 101 times slower. Um, there's a lot of overhead to go create these regex objects, right? You can see even for the memory allocated, there's a lot of, it's two orders of magnitude more memory, right? It's just something that you don't want to do is go create a new regex object every time. You're in a hot path of your code and it has to do a lot of regex matching. You should not do this. If anything, just switch right away to using the static method on the static class. You'll get a performance gain that's about a hundred times, right? It's a huge impact. Now. We talked about this compiled flag being an optimization and truly having it compiled ahead of time is an optimization. So you do want to do that, but you don't want to create a new regex object with a compiled flag in it every time you go to use it. Because we saw that it was 100 times slower to make a new regex object, but it's 10 times slower than that when you put the compiled flag in. So if you look at the third line here, eight. 170 X the baseline, right? It took 10 microseconds. So literally it's three orders of magnitude more. Um, it's ridiculous, right? You don't want to be doing this compiled flag every single time you go to create and use a regular expression. You lose all of the performance benefits of doing that because you're paying this overhead of compiling it each time. And this is where the evidence is going to start to show itself, right? So the cached and cached compiled variations, you can see here that this right here on the fourth line down, right? The ratio, it's 0.79. So just by caching it, no compile flag, just by making the regex object once, we do get a performance gain over using the static method. The runtime is about 80%, right? So there is a boost to doing that. When we add the compiled flag in on the cache one, we can see that it is a little bit faster. In my opinion, this could just be rounding errors because this is already super fast and we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. I think that this could just be rounding errors and things like that. It's worth doing more benchmarking and maybe running this over larger bodies of text or maybe even different patterns to match with to see if there's a variation. But it does look like it's a little bit faster to use the compiled flag and cache. So again, both of these two benchmarks in particular illustrate that the previous two are not things you want to do. You don't want to keep making new regex instances. That's the takeaway from this video. Please don't do it. The last four that we see in these benchmark results are using the source generated regular expressions. These are all extremely close in terms of the runtime. If we look at the ratio column, right, we saw 0.79 for the last two at the, the upper end and the upper end of these ones is 0.82. They're all right around the same territory for the, the runtime that they have. And I did seem to notice that there is a little bit of a performance gain when doing the cached version, right? So not having that method call, even though the documentation says that that information's cached already, so you can safely call it. Across two benchmarks, it does look a little bit faster. Again, it could just be rounding errors and it's pretty insignificant at this scale. It might be worth doing it again across bigger bodies of text, more loops, all sorts of things that we could try out to see if there's a bit of a gain there. But ultimately, if we look at the last six results here, these look across the board to be faster than the baseline, right? We can see about a 0.77 up to 0.82, you know, ratio against the baseline. These are all faster. But the two that we looked at near the beginning, definitely slower. Again, the takeaway is that you don't want to make a new regex and especially put in that compiled flag for each time. 
I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I've been getting really curious about the performance characteristics when there's multiple ways to do basically the same thing, right? If I can pick and choose which way to go, I might as well try to pick the way that's going to be faster, especially if it's on the hot path of my code. If it weren't for doing that investigation, I wouldn't have learned a little bit more about the source generators with those special attributes for regular expressions. In fact, I have a lot more to go learn now that I've created this video and started just scratching the surface of that. I urge you to do the same thing. I think you should be curious about the code you're working with, and especially when it comes to benchmarking things, because there's a lot that we can learn. And while benchmarks like this can be interesting and point you in a direction, you will want to do profiling and benchmarking on your own code, because your scenarios will look different than mine. And if you want to learn about how to benchmark your own code, you can go watch this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.